time of its release in 1983, the Adidas Forum, the high top version of this, was the most expensive basketball shoe ever made. So we're gonna cut the low top version in half, see what's on the inside, see how it's all built and structured and see if it lives up to the lineage and history of the shoe or if it's just another casual retro release that doesn't have any of the old school attributes that made it the shoe that it was 40 years ago. So to give you a quick one minute history of the Adidas Forum, and we pulled a lot of this information from Nacho Average Finds 10 minute breakdown of the history. So if you wanna go watch that, I'll put a link in the description. But it all started in 1983 when the designer of the shoe, Jacques Chasing, I don't know how to say his last name, uh, Nacho Average Finds struggled with it too, so I feel justified in butchering it. But he was Adidas's most experienced running shoe designer, and he came up with the Adidas Forum by talking to the basketball players and people who are actually gonna be using the shoe and finding out what they needed and adding certain features to the shoe to give them the attributes to be one of the best basketball sneakers out there. Then they officially launched this shoe in 1984 during the LA Olympics and the Olympic games were held in the forum, which is why they called these, these sneakers the forum. And then also in 1984, Michael Jordan was seen wearing these shoes in the Olympic before he signed with Nike. And then fast forward to 1990, this is when the Forum low top was dropped, the shoe here. And it was the first basketball sneaker that came in a low top, mid top, and high top. And also in 1990, Kevin McAllister wears the Forums in the movie Home Alone, which later in 2021 got its own collab. And then from 1990 onward, it became a, a kind of a cult favorite and bounced around to different groups and became a, a skating shoe, like a hip hop shoe. It kind of just bounced around all over the place in popularity. Then over time, it slowly kind of died off and the popularity kind of waned. But in 2020, Adidas re-released the form as part of their Adidas original line to great success and a lot of popularity. And then in 2021, Bad Bunny did a collab. And by 2022, the year we're in now, it's a popular shoe because of this retro 80 sneaker trend right now that has a ton of collaborations going on. So that's the history of the shoe, but now let's start going over the actual materials in the shoe, starting with the leather first. So this is a tumbled chrome tanned leather. You can tell it's crumbled because of, <laughs> tumbled because of how soft it is and how much texture is in the actual leather itself. And the reason they do tumbled leather on sneakers, especially now, Nowadays is to, to prevent a lot of that break-in period and to make them conceal the creasing a little bit better. But the problem with the tumbled leather and cheap sneakers like this is it's the same leather where they put that plastic coating on top, but all they do is throw it in a big, basically a dryer to tumble it around and it softens up the leather and wrinkles it and basically pre-breaks it in and pre-creases it. But that causes that top layer of plastic to separate. So when you bend this leather, you can already see those little bubbles formed by that layer separating. So it's just begging to be flaked off. You just kick the curb once and that little bubble of air of that separation is gonna flake off. So this is up there with the worst leather we've seen on sneakers solely because it's a tumbled leather with a fake plastic coating on top. But at least it is a fairly thick leather for sneakers. It's right around that Air Force One, one thickness at 1.6 millimeters thick, which is also a little bit thicker than the New Balance 550s that was really, really thin at one millimeter thick. So now let's grade this leather by burning it first. So we put the flame to it. And as you can see, it's pretty obvious. It's got that really heavy plastic coating on top. And then if you look at the cross section, you can see it does have just a little teeny bit of that grain left in there. Not nearly as much as what we see in a higher quality leather like we've been doing in like the boots. Here's a little side-by-side -side shot to show you how much grain should be in a higher quality leather. And then if we put the macro lens on the leather to see if it has a fake print embossed into it, you can tell that it does. Even with the naked eye, you can. You can tell because it's just the same repeating pattern over and over. And real tumble, tumble leather has a lot more variation in the folds and the rolls and the way that it tumbles like this. And this makes sense for this type of sneaker because the people that buy sneakers are so obsessed with every little detail being accurate and, and, and exactly what they see in every single photo. So if it were a real tumbled leather without the fake embossed print, it wouldn't look as clean and consistent across the entire shoe and from shoe to shoe. So it's pretty clearly a C grade leather. So not quite as bad as the 550s D grade leather, but right on par with the rest of Nike's leathers that we've done with the Air Force Ones and some of the other cheap leather we've seen. And then you also have a layer of suede that wraps around a good part of the shoe, which I also assume is a little bit of a sidewall uh, reinforcement to give you a little bit more structure for a performance shoe. And the hope would be that it was double layered up to give you that actual support. And if you look at the cross section of this, it's clearly just a full suede leather. There's no grain in it at all. And then if we move to the midsole, so this is a feature that 
the Adidas form was really well known for. It's the Dellinger web. And this was a nylon netting that you can see right here that was created by Bill Dellinger. And it was designed to effectively distribute the impact of stepping or jumping across the midsole foam and it allegedly absorbed 10% of the impact from that, that foot strike. It is a very old school looking technology of just putting like a, a net around a midsole, but the technology is 40 years old. So we'll see how much of this net is actually still in this shoe or is it just like what we've seen with the uh, Reebok pumps with the Hexalite that was just a little teeny square that wasn't actually functional in any way. And we wanted to do the, the ball drop test on this to see how that midsole responded. And so we so we tested the Air Force Ones, the 550s and these, and the Air Force Ones bounced up 10.5, the 550s bounced up 7.3, and the Forums bounced up 12.7. So it bounced up, it had the most response out of the three shoes. We also did the bar drop test. And as you can see, it, it performed better than the other shoes in this test as well. And another feature of this shoe is these sidewall supports that are a little bit harder rubber or plastic that is supposed to help your foot not blow out and, and push out the side of the shoe when you actually pivot really hard on it or land in the uh, angled trajectory. I don't really know how to describe that, but it's supposed to keep your foot in place. And this is another thing that we'll look for when we cut it in half to see if this is wrapped all the way underneath or anchored in at any point like we've seen in real performance basketball shoes like the uh, Jordan 11s where that carbon fiber plate wrapped all the way underneath or is it just a sidewall decoration at this point? And then if we look at the construction and the outsole, if we do a quick durometer test on the outsole, comes in at 75 Shore A. So pretty hard rubber, all things considered. We've seen softer rubbers recently in the 50 Shore A range. In the 70s, it's a lot closer to what we see in, in, in work boots. And then the way that this shoe is constructed is, is it's a strobel stitch. It's also cemented on the sidewalls and it also has the sidewall stitching that goes around the majority of the shoe but stops where that little cutout is that looks just like the 550s. So that's basically everything that we can know about the shoe before we cut it in half. So now let's cut it in half and really see if this suede is a double layer, if this sidewall reinforcement is anchored into anything and if this netting is just right here if it actually wraps around the whole midsole. So let's cut it in half. All right, we got it chopped in half, so let's see what's inside. Oh, that was a terrible opening. Let's try that again. So those three things we were looking for, the suede is not a double layer, unfortunately. And now we can clearly see that the, the Dellinger web is on, only at that little peekaboo spot right there. It doesn't go anywhere. And the sidewall support also isn't anchored into anywhere. It doesn't really give that much more support because it's not like a cup like the carbon fiber plate was on the 11s. It's not anchored into anything. It's just a little decorative sidewall. But there are some good things, you know, like the, the, the foam on the inside is really soft. That midsole is 19, 16 Shore somewhere in that, that high teens softness. So really soft midsole. And I really like the partially unlined part of the shoe. You've got the terry cloth at the heel here and a little bit at the toe, but I like the breathability and just the basicness of not having a lining through the, this part of the shoe. And then I like the silhouette. You know, I, I think it's a really cool vintage silhouette. I think it's, it's, right, it's popular right now and I, I love that these shoes are popular. This shoe was originally was a performance-based shoe, but now it's been retroed. And unfortunately, they've removed all of the old school technology from it. And now it's just, just the appearance of old school technology, which makes sense because the majority of people buying these shoes, they're not buying them for performance, especially for a 40 year old performance shoe. But for me, I would just rather have a true original forum sneaker that had everything as close to the original as possible. Yeah, it probably cost more and maybe not as many people would buy it, 
but it would just be really cool if these brands would come out with a true retro sneaker that was built to the exact same specs, had all the same technology, because how interesting would it be to be able to compare 40 year old tech compared to the newer tech and see what really, how much, how much the technology has advanced in 40 years or 30 years or whatever it happens to be. So that's what's inside the Adidas form. So let me know what you guys think and what other sneakers you want us to cut apart and what other old school retro technologies that have been retroed you want to see us test because I really enjoy doing this kind of video. So thank you guys. See ya.